FR in listen only mode. Good morning and welcome to CAD One's webinar AutoCAD Sheet Sets and Fields. My name is Stan Henney. I'm the Business Development Health Manager here at CAD One, but more importantly, we have with us our instructor, our new and our brand new instructor, Devin Shea, Associate AIA. And uh, Devin's been with us about a, what, about a month now? A couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, Devin has a lot of good experience in AutoCAD and Revit and Maya and Max and other programs, though. He's been teaching for a number of years at uh, other colleges. So, Devin, welcome. And uh, Devin will be conducting this here in a minute, so we'll get started. First, we have a housekeeping slide that we want to rattle off here. And most of you who join us frequently know this slide, but nonetheless, uh, we're echoing very bad. Well, I don't know if we can do too much about that. Do we have Can we turn off uh, anything here so we're not getting a... Actually, my microphone, I just noticed that. Okay. See, that's what you have. You get a new guy and you got to retrain. No, that's fine. We'll get, we'll, hopefully, we'll get this uh, taken care of here in just a sec. There we go. All right. Is that better? Okay. Can everybody hear us? Raise your hand if you can hear us. Okay. And are we still getting an echo? Uh, yes, we're still getting an echo or something. Okay. Well, all good. Good. Thanks for all the feedback. That helps. Appreciate it. Sometimes sometimes here in the CAD1 webinar studio, <laughs> things go awry. <laughs> All right. So uh, with that said, uh, if you want to minimize your console, hit the orange and white arrow and push it out of the way. Uh, you can uh, raise your hand if you like for whatever the reason you raise your hand in webinars. Um, most importantly, though, you can ask um, questions. Now, we ask that you type your question in, and today we're going to have a little bit different format. Um, uh, since Devin's kind of new with us here, and he'd like to kind of be able to keep his pacing while he's learning some of the tips and tricks of webinars, uh, we're going to hold the questions to the end, but we will get to them for you. So uh, just post them, and we'll get to them as quick as we can. And with that, Devin, uh, I'm going to make a couple little announcements here, and then we'll turn it over to you to uh, get rolling on the, the heart and soul and the meat of this matter. Um, Wanted to remind everybody, June 27th, our big uh, 25th anniversary Customer Appreciation Day. It's going to be a lot. We're going to have uh, Wayne Hodgins and Autodesk Futurist. Wouldn't you love that title? Uh, along with uh, the team from CSNA talking about the history of renovation and uh, the technologies used at the Broadmoor Hotel in Colorado Springs. And then we're going to have uh, Mark Hughes and um, Brendan Dillon from DIA talking about how they're using InfraWorks to uh, combine BIM and uh, GIS and civil data. Uh, a lot of other presentations, what's new in the software. We're going to have licensing talks and lots of prizes. We've got a very special, cool surprise prize. So, uh, which is getting a lot of use around here already, <laughs> and some other things. So it's free. Go to our website, and you can register. That's absolutely free. Wanted to let you know out there, anybody who has licenses of LT, Autodesk is running a great promo uh, through July 25th that you can upgrade those licenses to LT to a full Autodesk product. Uh, at a very substantial discount. So give us a call if that's of interest to you. As most of you know, Autodesk will be discontinuing re upgrades as of February 1st next year. So if you do have older software and you need to get it upgraded, and I, I know what you've many of you have heard me say this many times, but we're going to say it throughout the year because we don't want our good customers to get caught with some older software that they meant to get upgraded but never did, and then they have to buy a, a new copy of this or a new license of the software come February 1st. So. There's up, uh, discounts throughout the year on upgrading software. If you have some and you want to upgrade it, 
get it upgraded as soon as possible. The discounts will slide, so the best discounts are right now. By the end of the year, there'll be quite a bit less discounts. So, you know, again, save yourself some money, heartache and trouble. Uh, let's see, that's enough of that. Let's say, uh, okay, we, we've got one question from Chris there. So we will go ahead and get started. Devin, can I turn it over to you and let you take the ball from here? Yes, sir. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, sheet sets and fields, um, both of them and then how they relate to each other. Uh, first of all, I would like to just throw this out here. Um, we do have a webinar on sheet set creation. It is an hour-long webinar. Uh, you can find that on our CAD1 YouTube channel uh, presented by Michael. Um, so I will actually not be showing you how to present one. What I'm going to do is kind of explain some things, go into some troubleshooting areas, and try to sort of explain what's really going on when we make these things. Um, so today what we're going to talk about fields in general. What are some basic object types of fields? What are some document types of fields? What are sheet set fields and how they relate to our sheet set? Uh, then we're also going to go into some, some troubleshooting and talking about sheet sets themselves. Uh, we're going to talk about what, they, what they're really doing when you make them. Um, what are some fields for sheets specifically? how to edit a uh, field within a title block sheet or any sheet, inserting new ones, what are some best practices when dealing with these things. Um, I'm going to cover uh, something that Michael didn't cover in his uh, webinar, uh, how to put a sheet view title block onto a view in a sheet. And um, also we're going to edit a title block. How do we properly edit a title block for our sheet set? What is attribute sync and why am I bringing that up? And blocks for views. So uh, first of all, we're just going to talk really quickly about fields, objects, and data. So when we type the field command, uh, this dialog bo box pops up. It basically shows you different types of field categories, what are the subcategories of those, and how do we apply them, basically. It's all done through this box. Um, <clears throat> so when we first open up our field manager, we have the basic category of all, which shows all of our fields. Um, I don't know why I had that up there, but we'll just go on here. Um, this is an example of what the sheet set field dialog box looks like. And you can see that these are sort of talking to your sheet set manager. Um, next slide. All right, so enough of fun slides. Let's go into AutoCAD. So uh, is I am, this AutoCAD 2015? That is exactly what I was about to say. All I'm right. using AutoCAD 2015. You'll notice some dramatic changes in the user interface um, if you have not seen 2015 yet. Uh, but basically everything is the same. So what we're looking at here is a sheet set that I have created here. You'll notice that I basically have just some simple sheets set up. I'm currently looking at A103 sections right here. Uh, the first thing um, we're going to actually talk about are fields. So I'm going to actually pull up a drawing that I have created in here. It's called field play. So first of all, what I want to talk about are some different types of object fields in AutoCAD. You can do lovely things like uh, attach the area com command to an object which will report what the area is. You can even put these things in nice little tables so if you are into tabular data that you would like to organize you can literally just put this in here. All of these are are used through mText. Um, so you basically start with an mText creation and that takes you here. The lovely things about these object fields, if I go in here and edit an area, you will notice that my number hasn't updated yet, but if I regen, this number automatically updates. This and one... I know that's a little hard to see on the screen. Hopefully you can kind of see the contrast there, but that's how Auto, AutoCAD kind of puts it out for you here. Sweet. Yeah, there you go. That will show up a little better. OK, 
Okay, and then uh, down here in the table, I have a couple of these data objects tied to this line right here. So you can see that I put a starting coordinate. So what I did was I used this field data to attach to this line to tell me what is my starting coordinate. So theoretically, if I come down here and move this guy, and I'm talking to this start coordinate down here, what I'm going to do is regen again. And you should see that that updated a little bit. It's kind of hard to see in this uh, in model space here, but that's basically what that does. Okay, and um, let me just make a new one here for you if you guys have never seen this before. What I'm going to do is just make a closed polyline shape. Just any, any old shape will do. I want to make sure that that's closed. So that essentially gives me a closed polygon. Then I'm going to type the command field. What I'm going to do is go up to this field category. I'm going to look for the category objects. I'm going to click again this object subcategory here. And now I have to use this to pick an object. So I'm going to come down here, select this. And then it gives me certain data aspects for the object parameter. So what I'm going to do is just click area, hit OK. So next thing it's going to do is ask me to place this value. So what I just did was I added a field to AutoCAD itself. Notice over here I actually have some text embedded in there. I can do the exact same thing with my mText command and I come in here and just put a title on it basically. So I'm going to say area equals and when I'm in the mText editor I have this little option field up here so I can just come to field and I'm going to do the same exact thing I did before. Area, okay. You will notice down here in the bottom it's actually producing a little field expression which is sort of the data calculation, fun stuff that only computer programmers pay attention to. Um, another option I have up here is what sort of units do I want to report that in. I pretty much want to always keep that on current units because uh, I don't really want to change that, but you might want to. So you will see that I have now this gray sort of highlighted area. So I have the normal text plus the gray highlighted. If I go into the mText er editor by double clicking, I can then double click on that field and it will then pull up my field box if I need to change any of this data. So this is a very, very nice command. We also have different things in here that um, talk to sort of project information or document information. Um, I did see one question pop up that said, how do I change my date format to month, month, year, year, uh, day, day, I believe it was. Yes. So, so let me kind of see if we can do that real quick. So this project info data, the fields that I'm using here come from the document sector here. So I can come down here and I can basically change, put in any of this stuff that I want. Things like file size, file name, comments, author. <laughs> um, and here's one for date and time. So if I come in here for date I should find, let's see, he uses month, month, day, day. Okay, well that doesn't have two digits. Oh, here we are. No, that's month, month, day, day, 11, June 14. Okay, well, um, I'm sure somewhere in here we have that option, so I'm just going to pick one real quick. Yeah. Um, Oh, here we go. I think I can actually just, I am not going to try this, but I think we might be able to just configure our uh, month, month, day, day scenario up here. And I think if we just use this, there we go. So I think we can just change that around. But I'm just going to throw this out here. So here is the date. Um, curious as why it's reading November, um, but we can set that up make sure to go check our dates and our project settings and stuff like that. But that's just basically how we can use a field to sort of throw out a date on your, your project. So if I'm using just an individual title block, 
for let's say a one page project or something that you have three or four tabs on, I can sort of set this up in my title block. So all those fields I can put into my title block. And by the way, uh, these fields in AutoCAD are nothing but fancy attributes. Um, I will show you here in a little bit what is going to happen when we insert a block with attributes into here. You will notice that it pulls up the same dialog box that uh, talks to our attributes. So we're going to get there in a moment. So uh, these are just some basic foreign fields inside of um, AutoCAD that you can use for sort of generic things, everyday common things. So the next category we're going to talk about are sheet sets. So under the category sheet sets, we have lots of different things. So we have your sort of basic generic current sheet descriptions. These guys you would use on your title block for just generic things like custom sheet creation. If you want to use the fields that are available on the sheet sets, you have to go down here to sheet set. And you will notice that when I click sheet set, what this is doing is it's talking to my sheet set. You will notice over here I have a webinar sheet set that I have set up. And all of my parameters within my sheet set you should find over here. And also it shows you different uh, layout tabs and whatnot that I can pull these different ones from. So. That's just a quick brief topic on that. I'm going to come back to that in a second, but what I want to do is give you a general overview of what is a sheet set and what are sheet sets doing. So we know that if we um, come up to the application icon and we come up to new, we can say sheet set. And what this does is it pulls your existing AutoCAD drawings into a sheet set. And what is going to happen is it's going to grab your existing drawings. It's going to know that if you have any named views in your model space, if you have any named layout tabs in your paper space, and it will pull that information into your sheet set. What is really going on when I'm doing all this, and I'm just going to cancel out of this. Um, oops. Yes, please. What is really going on here is... AutoCAD is pulling your drawing views as XREFs. So if I want to go over here and look at my model space, this is a sheet that was created using the sheet set creation wizard uh, to pull this in. So if I zoom extents, you will see that these views that pulled from my drawing entitled SS Web Section Drawing. These are the actual views that are in there and the objects and it, what it's doing is creating an XREF. So just as long as you know that this is an XREF, you can use all of your XREF commands to deal with them. You will notice one thing that I did very badly. If I go to Layer Properties, what I did was I exported a Revit file into this and you can see that I didn't uh, pay attention to my layers very well in here. And here are my XREF layers just to prove to you that it is an XREF. So if you know that these are XREFs that kind of gives you an idea if you know how to edit them you can go in and sort of play with these guys. Okay when we create our sheet set it pulls a template from a template file that uses the same template over and over again for each one of your sheets. Okay, so to find this, where the location of this, I can come up here and right click on the title of my sheet set and go to properties. So in here, this tells me where everything is stored. I copied over the architectural imperial template and threw it into my own folder. That's, this is kind of depends on how you do things in your office, whether or not you want to leave it stored in the AutoCAD default spot. Another thing going on is um, when I am pulling information from my title block, I also have blocks for views, callout blocks, page setup overrides. So these are the locations of where your label block views go and where your callout blocks are located and all of this good stuff. Um, down here, 
<clears throat> we also have our project control fields. These are sort of the masters, if you will, that are built into the template itself. So I'm going to change some data over here and just give it some info so we can see what it's doing later. Okay, down here, the sheet set custom properties. These are where sheet sets get a little annoying and confusing. So these guys are custom properties that you can add whatever you want. And these are the items that are pretty much attributes. So these guys are nothing but attributes. If I want to add them, I can add whatever I want. I'm just going to throw in a couple of weird ones here. OK. And then OK. And then you will notice that whatever custom fields I've been here will show up down here. Things like project project addresses, all basic stuff. So those are where you guys are located. All right. So what we're going to do really quick here is I am going to show you how to deal with title block and how to sort of adjust some things and what is really going on when I can't get it to work right. So I'm going to go into where my type is going here. So now I have the architectural imperial template for my sheet set selected. You will notice that it has the name up here and it is DWT. So those of you that come from the old school of AutoCAD like myself, we had lovely things called attributes. So if I double click on a block that is attributed, it instantly pulls up this enhanced attribute editor. So you will notice that I have certain attributes down here. So these are the basic ones that I was just showing you in the custom field of the sheet set. So I basically have all my good stuff like the date, the scale, the sheet number, yada yada. This, these things you have to actually dial into your sheet set properties. Um, so if you want them to show up on each page, you come in here and enter them, and then your title block will read those, and it will put them down here. So just to kind of show you uh, how this is going to change, project address, okay. Um, I'm just going to put CAD1 because I don't know my address yet. So you will see that that instantly updated. All right, well that is all good and gravy, Devin, but what is this gigantic mess you have here and what? Are, how do I fix this giant no notes thing? All right, well let's say if I pick this up from my CAD drafter, I need to fix it. So what I'm going to do is just go into block editor. So now I am in my block editor. So this guy, I actually put in an attribute. Um, I don't really want this in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it. Bye-bye. All right, so uh, by the way, the, the easy way to figure out if you have a field or an attribute in your drawing is the field will have this sort of gray background. And if I have a gray background, uh, I can go in and double click it. So one double click took me into an mtext editor because I created it with mtext. Another one, and will take me into whatever this sheet category is. So I did this incorrectly. I wanted current sheet set, apparently. So if I go down to my sheet set, I can put in sheet title. And here's a tricky thing. I can also pull the sheet title from this sheet. Do I want to do that? I don't know. That's up to you. But uh, I can also pull a straight view title from there, sheet set. Let's put a sheet title on here. Okay. Notice I need to put a space there. So this is the sheet title. I had selected section page. So that is a little confusing. Why would I want to put that on there? I don't know. That's kind of up to you. So we're going to go back to current sheet set. And what I can also do, oops, thought I could change that. Current sheet set. So this is pulling data from something that is not able to read it. That's why it's just giving me a generic one right now, because I also had this one set. 
So being that this is my template, I don't really want to pull information from other drawings because this is my template. So let's just exit out of here and forget about this for right now. But what I'm going to do is leave this on here because there's something else I want to show you. Okay, uh, one thing we kind of always want to do is put in a revision title. So I put in a generic attribute. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to put in a field that comes from our sheet set that will give me a revision number. I'm going to put this up here. And bad. Um, this is very big. We had a couple comments that um, Devin's voice was getting choppy and kind of fading in and out. I I don't know where that's coming from. The mic's right up by him, but at the same time, some of the VOIP connections sometimes break up a little bit. So hopefully you can hear Devin now, and just, just keep us posted if it does break up, and we'll do what little we can to adjust for it. So... And I will try to uh, sort of slow down with the speaking. I did have about four cups of coffee this morning. So um, what I'm going to do again here is I'm going to go into mText. And you can see that I can change my text height that will kind of make this a little easier to read here. And then I'm going to put in the same field. All right, there we go. So you saw before how it was gigantic and... Um, I went in there and fixed it really quick, and I can also move these guys around wherever I want. Um, so this is the revision number. Now here is uh, something that it, you're always going to have to kind of update with these guys. Um, if I double click this guy, it doesn't really give me any data. So he, what it's doing is it's looking for a revision number sort of title. Um, so you have to go in and actually enter a revision number and I'm going to show you how you're going to do this here in a minute. Okay, another thing I have down here is I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to save my title block. Okay, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to go down here and let's say I want to make this text smaller down here that's on my sheet size. First of all, you will notice something. Um, my title block did not update with my attributes. So what you have to do is type attribute sync and select that attribute and say yes. This will update your attribute fields. We also have to do that in our drawing on our sheet set if we made edits to our template file. Okay, so one more change I'm going to make here is I'm going to go into a block editor mode. I'm going to grab this and sheet number okay so let's double click that sheet number okay so this is an attribute so I have to edit it differently so I'm gonna close this guy save changes and now I'm going to close my title block yes so what I just did was I made changes to my title block the first thing you should always do and do this a lot is come over here right click on your webinar sheets resave all sheets this will save it notice how this did not update again so I have to run the same command attribute sync select click yes and an issue so that will is supposed to do it and I just did it three times this morning so I'm willing to bet if I close this sheet open it back up use ATT sync again it will fix itself and just to sort of deal with that let me open up this sheet and you'll see that that already fixed itself so I am telling the truth it will change okay so notice now that I'm in a sheet one of my sheet views so one thing I'm gonna do is come down here to my my advanced enhanced attribute editor and I just want to change the text size of that so I can just go to text size and change this to quarter inch okay I can also use annotative text styles alright so notice how I'm missing some stuff so let me resync oops get it 
All right, and this guy comes back again, and not to my revision. So uh, this is a strange thing <clears throat> that comes into um, your sheet set, which is one of the weird things. So I always, whenever this starts giving me trouble, I go in, and sometimes I'll close the entire sheet set, reopen it, run ATT Sync again. Sometimes I refresh my XREFs if this is not working, but this will function. I'm also having an AutoCAD bug on, so I think this is what's doing that to me. Okay, so those are title blocks. One thing I do want to show to you to prove to you that these are XREFs, oh, I'm sorry, attributed blocks, is I'm going to delete my title block. So if you're using a sheet set manager and you accidentally delete your title block, I suggest that you just make a new sheet because let me show you what's going to happen here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this from my title block itself and let me just open my title block again because it's easier to get to this way. All right, so let me go back to this page, and I'm going to insert this from the design manager, design center. Okay, so when I insert this, here is a problem. Um, you think it would be easy just to enter all of these custom values, right? But you don't want to do this because what will happen sometimes, depending on how your settings are, so I'm just going to go in here and add some values, and notice how these are gray, because they are talking to a field. Anything that has a gray background, talking to a field. So I'm going to hit OK, and we're going to see what happens. Let's remove this down here. Come on, buddy. All right. So come down here, and you notice that I changed all of these. Well, is this the project name and address that's coming from the Sheet Set Manager? Let's go check this out. So you can see that project address and all of this good junk that I just filled in, good stuff, I'm sorry, uh, has generic values, and it is not the value reading here. So this is a very big issue. So this is why I say if you are going to accidentally delete that tile block, go ahead and just create a new page. Because what will eventually happen when I close this and restart it, you will sort of notice sometimes, sporadically, that down here in this field you'll have doubling up of information and data. So you don't want that to happen at all. So if you happen to accidentally delete that tile block, I'll just close that drawing and say don't save it. Open it back up, and I'm back. Or just delete, close this file, delete that page, start all over. What if you just hit undo, Kevin? Uh, you yes. Deleted it and then hit undo. Does that kind of cause some problems too? Uh, no, undoing it will not cause problems. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is, let's say you're the new guy in the office, and uh, which always happens to us. And uh, your boss says, uh, open up the sheet set and edit something. Well, if you open up that drawing and somebody had deleted it, um, somebody deleted the template file or something like that, it's not going to show up. So what you have to do is deal with it. Um, so I say just make a new page. Just delete this guy. Make sure you go into your, um, your folder where that's at and delete the file because it might give you heck when you're trying to overwrite it. All right. Good stuff. So um, we sort of covered that good stuff. Okay, now another thing that I'm going to kind of go over real quick that Michael didn't go over his is how to bring in some um, views, which he actually did cover. But uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to my model view tab on my sheet set manager. And you'll see that in web section one, I have two views within my model space. So what I can do is I can drag this over onto the screen. And uh, when I drag a view on there, I do have the option to uh, create whatever scale I have in my system. Um, mine is a little bit out of scale because I was using a metric project and not a very good idea. So we'll put that there. You notice that it brings a little view title with it. So this is sort of a default thing, and where these blocks are coming from, 
they are in your properties and so label view for blocks so you'll see that is coming from a template that is actually not the one I'm using so if I want to change that I can go over here and I can change this guy to wherever I'm at so I did make a file called not junk and it's not test I should go in the right folder zero zero blocks so this guy is a, a file that I put some blocks in that I can pull from um, so that is kind of how you do that so I'm not going to go to my template because that's going to cause me some issues call out blocks so what I can do is I can add that location where my blocks are from so I can add this AutoCAD will search through that file see if it has any blocks in there which I have a lot I can select all or I can select none or one whatever makes you happy and I will hit OK so this basically will give me the option don't you do it okay, thank you so when I go to this view I'll at least make it readable okay here's a view it's a little call out in it so what I'm gonna do is back over here to sheet views first I'm going to save everything then I'm gonna to go to sheet views I am on my elevation sheet um, this should be showing a view up here um, I don't know why what's going on here it should be showing the view here we go since it read it as a view in my sheet I can go ahead and plop it down here come on buddy Let me try this one okay why are you being annoying all of a sudden let me pull up my section view where I have this working and I will come over here but anytime that you have a view in model space that this is where this is coming from you can right click on the view that's on the sheet mine is a little messy right now but I'm just going to go call out and this will place this so this will pertain to whatever sheet this is on notice how I am on sheet 103 and I'm actually pulling a detail from sheet 102 so that can be a little confusing and if I want to change the view t number I can just go in here and hit view 5 or whatever um, this is not really the most fluid setup here um, but it does tell you whatever view title it is I can also come in here and if I say place view label block I can throw that on there as well and that's dealing with this guy here I'm sorry this guy here and whatever the scale is um, and then I just want to show you real quick how I made this quick and easy file full of blocks change this so here is just a generic file that I made um, just with these different annotative blocks in them and how I did that was I just went to my tool palette and under annotation I can just come down here and throw whatever blocks that I want in there and then I just save that and then I go in and point this oh, no wonder I'm having issues I accidentally quick clicked the wrong one <clears throat> anywho but I can go back up here to properties and again these are where these call out blocks and label blocks are located um, you can put all of those blocks within your title within your title block template if you like all right and I think that sort of covers the overall sort of scheme here so we have about 20 minutes that I sort of just want to do some questions and answers um, so Stan do you have some questions well, for we, me we have kind of a continuation of the question from Chris on uh, the date uh, issue Chris's original question I use the date format of month month day day year year which does not show up in the examples to choose from is there a way to have that format show up in my examples and if so make it show uh, up at the top of the list, etc. And then you showed some things there, Devin, 
on how to how to put that in the list. And Chris asked, uh, you can change at the top, but I was wondering if there was a way to make the option show up in the examples. Your example is showing 11th of June, not November 6th. Okay. So I think you know what is basically being said is uh, day month rather than month day. Okay. Day month. All right. So let's go up to date and time. Date. Okay. So um, kind of what Devin's looking for that. If any of you have uh, other questions, type them in, and we'll get to them uh, just after this. So let's try to make a mess here. So month, month, day, day, year, year. Okay. Month, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to, and you want a two-digit year. Okay. Okay, Let's... so Chris does it clarifying. So I want 06 slash 11 the 11th slash 14 for the year. Okay. So that's the example. Okay, so what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try to go up here and uh, just see if we can break something real quick. All right, let's see if this works. This should we should be able to do this because these sort of um, things are built within AutoCAD. Whoopsie. Okay, 42 DD 14. Okay, that didn't do what we wanted it to do, did it? So the 42nd month of. <laughs> <laughs> Here at CAD 1, we have 50 months in our year because we're always working. Okay, let's try to go up and find one of those. All right. Now you can, if you do have a buddy who likes to make these little, I uh, don't even know what sort of computer programming jargon this is, um, but you can sort of go in here and sort of create your own field expression if we can't get this to work. Um, I believe you can go into, let's say, Excel and sort of write that and get that to, to kick you out this code here. But let's try to go in and actually do this. Um, let's see. So, 11.06.2014. have to have this option because there are 400 so there has to be one that works in here and Chris have you tried to go in and, and look at find the one in this box or is this box new to you oh and, and yeah what Paul mentions is that that the M's are case sensitive, so uh, lowercase m, lowercase m means minutes, not uh, months. Uppercase gotcha. M means months. <laughs> Which I thought that I had that expression written. So let's try this one. And okay, eleven oh six fourteen. Okay, what? Uh, let me just be clear about what this date is that is reporting. Um, obviously, this is coming from either your system. Um, so my AutoCAD system thinks that it is November right now, or it can come from the data within your project. Um, I am very good at doing that in Revit, uh, but I would have to kind of go in and dig where you set these. But this information, all of these fields, they're pulling from something. So this date that is reporting, it is coming from some sort of system variable that is the date is wrong and I believe I can let me show you how you can kind of um, do this with if you just want to say I can't figure that out I just want to see today's date so if you go in here to your M text and I'll put uh, date today is the 11th 14 okay so I'm gonna oops didn't mean to close that but if I come in here and select this and then hit field and then that stuff, of course I'm going to pick the wrong one now. We're getting all sorts of suggestions from the audience, so kind of why you're looking. Um, uh, 
Chris mentions, uh, no, it's the 11th of June that is uh, showing. And then uh, Jay says, uh, I think it's giving the day, month, and year. Jan uh, says, uh, these fields are like using Excel, right? Can you do a custom uh, for that date? And yes, you can. Yes, um, and yeah, I already um, kind of brought then, that one up. Uh, Pedro says, try uppercase M, uppercase M, slash, lowercase d's, and then lower uh, slide lowercase y's. Um, and, you know, I think that I think the gist of it here is that, you know, Chris says, uh, uh, or Bob says, try uh, mm, uppercase mm, lowercase d, lowercase y's, and so forth. So I think we're kind of on the on the right track here, but uh, yep. And then uh, Chris, I uh, you said yours was showing 11th of June, which that is what it should be showing because your system is probably correct. I just inherited this laptop and I haven't went in and got all these things figured out here. Looks like so. it's set up for world uh, order rather than U.S. order on the date there. Yeah, uh, because Angela also is saying that hers is showing up right. She probably has hers set for uh, U.S. centric dating. So mm -hmm. anyway, yep. So you can well, change all that good stuff. And then um, I just wanted to, to uh, remind you also: yes, you can do those expressions within Excel and just copy and paste. You know what? However, you want it to look like. If it's a string of text that AutoCAD doesn't recognize, you might get some errors and stuff like that but yeah you can go in and sort of create your own custom stuff and when I was going back to uh, talking about how things um, that aren't showing up like whoops like this revision date and stuff like that you would have to actually go in and um, give this a attribute to sort of talk to um, so you can do that um, one thing you we always want to do in our office is actually make a logical revision issue date. Um, so that takes a little bit of setting up and plotting and planning if it is not within the default field set here, anything in there. Okay, we've got a couple other questions here. Uh, uh, Pedro asks, how do you print from the sheet set manager? Oh, yes, Pedro. Um, yeah, let me show you that really quick. Um, if uh, you want to see the very long ex explanative version of that, you can also go onto a CAD1 uh, YouTube channel and find the hour-long sheet set creation. But let me just show you how to do that real quick. By the way, uh, publishing from your sheet set is very, very, very powerful. Um, because with one click, we can just print, right? So I can just right-click on the title of the sheet set, go to Publish, and I can publish to whatever options I have. So keep in mind, things like your CTB, your color-dependent plot style, that will actually be read from the template file. And if that gives you problems, I go in and add that CTB to every one of my layouts and every page just to make sure. Um, since sheet sets do use XREFs, like I said in the beginning, you have to know that you are editing your layer types with an XREF, so your CTB has to sort of do that. Um, E-transmitting is very nice because what it will do, and uh, I don't have something work set up for that, so um, E-transmit is very nice because it pulls every piece of data within your sheet set and sort of bundles it, zips it, sends it off where it needs to go. Um, so very good stuff here. If I go to my publish dialog box, this uh, is my little dialog box that I can put in a plot stamp, stuff like that, uh, drawing locations, drawing sizes, plot sizes, and I can figure out whatever, whichever layout or model view that I want to put in there. I can also go back and add any guys that I want um, by going in here and selecting these just to cause a mess real quick. And then that will put all of this stuff together for you. So I can pick whichever thing is going on here. And you will notice that sometimes if I have a layout, it will say it's a layout. If it's a model view, it will say it's a model view. All this good stuff. Um, so you can basically shoot it off from there. And then I can kind of go in here and sort of 
edit some things that are sort of like security deals that if I want to put a password on my PDF or my DWF, for instance, I can do that through this box. All right. All right. So uh, Jan asks, uh, everything shown today will work in Map 3D, correct? Yes, it will, because this is base map or base AutoCAD functionality. So any of the programs that are built on top of AutoCAD, these things will work well. There may be additional features in MAP or Civil 3D or AutoCAD architecture that you have, but these are core functionality, so you should be fine with any of these things shown today. And um, let's see, it looks like Angela, is there, a, is there any way to get the publish to option to default to a printer named in print setup on the publish dialog box when printing through the SSM. Uh, yes, you should be able to do that. Let's see. Uh, publish. I'll just. Yep. Yeah, probably shouldn't pick PDF, should I? Publish. Oh, and I might have some issues because I doubt all my plotters are set up. Oh, jeez. There is an option, uh, publish in background, which sometimes is annoying. Devin just got his computer, so <laughs> he's probably, he doesn't have all of his stuff set up. So yeah, so here. Um, first I have to get the option turned off here. Uh, Multi-sheet type layer. Um, but the answer to your question is yes, you can. Uh, once I have a saved printer, um, what you just you have to do it's basically like going into printing one page um, and I can't find there's that lovely button so okay, so I'm gonna go back to publish settings so I can actually see what's going on now Okay, I just turned you off, guy. All right, so we are going to go to it is in here. Okay, and I must apologize because I have no printer set up anywhere on my computer. But the question is yes. Any printer that you have set up on your local network, you will be able to, great, good stuff. Well, I guess that's the end of my CAD for today. Um, so if you have that name printer on there, it is in that dialog box. Um, you have to install it as a printer on your system before you can find it. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and Jan, yeah. if you do get that screen, please submit your error to Autodesk. So if something is wrong, they you will you will get an email that says there is a hot fix or something out there. Uh, so it will send you back an email and say try doing this. Um, I obviously have an issue with my uh, system. It's I've probably crashed five times while doing this exercise. So. So anyway, uh, folks, we're gonna we're going to uh, say bid you fun to do, and hope you'll join us on the next webinar. Devin, thanks for uh, jumping in here and and uh, t tackling this thing. And uh, you know we'll we'll have Devin on more webinars in the future. And thanks very much, folks. Talk to you soon. Bye now.